we giving Christmas today? We are giving Christmas today! Just one, because yeah. it's the 1st of December. It is. We're filming this on the 1st of December, guys. It's Hello. officially holiday season. Hi! <laughs> now, I know that we're here to rank Taylor Swift's opening tracks. Yes. But I do want to just say, I yes. feel like we need to... Oh. What are you I, what to say? <laughs> I feel like we need to address on this YouTube channel oh, yes. that we are aware of Travis Kelsey's presence because we have not talked about oh him. Oh my god! In Guys. a YouTube video over on Patreon, over on Patreon. we are obsessed <laughs> with Travis Kelsey. Yeah. We love Travis and Taylor. We do love Travis and Taylor. <laughs> We're so happy for her. Travis seems like a superior man. He seems like a superior man. Yeah. And yeah, if you want more of us, I guess talking about. Uh, the secret songs and you know her at the Eras tour and stuff that's all over on our Patreon yeah. so we, we talk about it we talk about it on there we do um, oh we have quite, quite a bit so, we have <laughs> you know, it's a very exciting time for us Swifties it's a very exciting it time is. for Taylor and Travis and I just felt like I needed to say that no I love that I, I specifically love the timing of it being the day after we got your yes. losing me on streaming yes I agree that you're bringing this up yeah. uh, uh, as we feel I this, really guys. feel like that was Taylor's way of closing the Joe chapter yeah um, yeah and and letting go. Anyway. I also just want to say off the back of that too that I do feel like releasing your losing me on stream streaming mm. was the last thing that I I've been feeling like needed to happen for the Midnight's era to be closed off. Yeah. Um so I do find it interesting now that that's happened. It sort of like leaves me in a little bit of a, you know, are we now in a state where we can expect something else? Yes. I don't know. It's such a it's such a difficult thing to know mm. like when we might get another album from Taylor. Mm. So much that's happened this year in her world as well that like so much that I'm sure she's been really inspired yes, by the right. Yes, I agree. I like, agree. Heartbreak and the Eras tour and falling in love again like so much this has been such a big year this is like i feel like this has been the biggest year since 2016 absolutely this year has been so crazy for her yeah she's grown so much she's learned so much she's become all these different versions of herself and i want to hear her explore that in music i I'm agree so desperate to hear what she's gonna what she's gonna say yeah not just about her love life but just about her journey like yeah. i just well, obviously, we feel so connected to her journey, and yeah. um, she helps us process our journey. Yes. So, I'm just so ready for it. Same, Whenever I'm so it ready happens, for it. I'm ready for it. I'm dying. I'm also, you know, I'm ready for we're it. We're ready for it. And I'm also ready for this video. Ready for this. So, guys, we're back on that ranking train. Mm. Um, as Bonnie said before, today we wanted to rank her album openers. It's something that you guys have been asking from us for mm. quite a while now. We are doing this a little bit differently from some of the other ranking videos you've seen, though. Uh, those videos, we've spent some time before filming actually compiling the list yeah. and like having sort of a joint mm. opinion on that. We've actually gone away with this one because there's only 10 uh, album mm. openers. Um, we've gone away with this one and actually compiled our own lists. Mm. And we're gonna go through them slowly and share our opinions as to why we think that each of these album openers sort of deserve to be where they are. Yeah, we thought it'd be fun to actually have a bit of a, a differing opinion slash yeah. a conversation around it and like surprise each other with yes. our ranking. What I've been really thinking about when trying to compile this list is objectively what is her best album opener with a sprinkle of my own personal opinion yes. in there. To me, a good album opener really sets you up for the message of what the album is going to be, the journey that it's going to take you on. It invites you into the world, the yep. sound. So we've both gone into this trying to keep that in mind. Like, yeah. what do we think is actually the right order yeah. for these songs <sighs> that in terms of how they actually introduce us yes. to this album. I'm very intrigued to see what <laughs> it is that you have to say because oh, obviously so we intrigued. have no idea in this moment like how each other have ranked it, but yeah. I can't help but feel like we're going to have some similarities. I think and so if too. we don't, I'm also excited to hear like why yeah, you've is. decided I agree. that it needs to be somewhere like... Mm -hmm. No, I'm, so I'm, I'm dying to know. I love this know. shit. I love I'm this actually, shit. I'm really dying to know what your last one, your least favorite is, because I feel like that was the hardest. It's always hard to put one of them last. Like, we love Taylor Swift songs. Every song she writes is the best song I've ever heard. Yeah. So it's always a bit offensive to have to rank one last. I think we should alternate with who goes first. Yeah. So would you like to start? I would love to start. <laughs> okay, I know so what my last one is, but let me just double check. Number you know? 10. Number 10. We're going to go. Yeah. Backwards. I don't want to say worst, but you know, worst to best. Yes, I don't want to say worst either. Take Number that. 10. Oh my God, I'm so excited to see you. Okay. You're going to tell me. 
I think that my least favorite album opener mm -hmm. is mine on <gasps> Speak Now. Okay, okay, okay. Now, what? I have reasons for all Please of my ordering. Me. Yeah. I just feel like, other than I think the significance that a song like mine has held, especially in the re recording process, and Taylor yeah. being able to use the song track name as like a, this album is now mine, yeah. this is the self written album, so it's like mm -hmm. mine yeah. in that way kind of thing. Yeah. I think if you remove that element from it, because I do think that that became more significant in the re recording phase, mm. as an original track list, I just don't think that mine does anything yeah. for me in terms of setting me up for the the message behind mm. speaking now. Yeah. You know, it's a it's a daydreamy song about falling in love, like a, a relationship that you would like to have one day, but one that she hasn't yet had. This is from this is in her own words as well. Yeah. I just there's more significant mm. messages on Speak Now. Mm that I just don't think that mine does the mo I think it sounds good as an album opener, but I just don't think in terms of it's like lyrical content or the nature of the song, I don't think it does a lot for introducing us yes. to the entire concept of that album. Totally. I respect that. Yeah. I will touch on mine when I rank her, but sure. I will just say on that topic, I've always been kind of a feeler that maybe Sparks Fly should have been the album opener. I thought about this when I yeah. was doing this ranking and it is interesting because it's the only album that you've ever I had that, that opinion about. about. And yeah. honestly, like to some extent I do agree. And she actually opened the Speak Now tour with Sparks yes. Fly and then went into mine. Like yeah. it was almost like on the tour, she did it the way that maybe felt a yes. little bit more. I think mine would have been a great track track too. Personally. I think so too. Um, like I think that it sounds great when you hit play on the album you hear the uh, all you hear is uh, 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 but yeah. I also think it would have been a razor like do, 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 do. like ah! either so, way it would have worked. Yeah I agree. Well I think that that does that does definitely fall into its weakness is that mine is an amazing song but did it need to be the first song? Yes. Could have it worked anywhere on the album? Probably. Exactly. Whereas some of these songs I genuinely yeah. feel like there was no other song that I could agree. have been the I first agree. song. I respect so, that. So yeah. yeah. Totally respect that. Yeah. What is your number 10? My number 10 which I feel a bit ill about but okay. I'm going to stick ah, with my gun is I forgot that you existed. <laughs> Good. Okay. Oh wow! I wasn't expecting that. Okay. I know. I just feel I, I I see where she was going with it, and I do respect it. I just think that when I go to listen to Lover as an album, I'm not in. I'm not excited by the song. Totally. I kind of want to go straight to Cruel Summer, and I even though I do feel like there was a strong message there with like you know forgetting that that all that crap kind of happened with like Reputation and Calvin and maybe Kanye as well. I do think that that message is clear and I do like that she started it with it, but I just don't think it hits. I just don't think it hits the way that I needed it to. No, I, 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 I get that. Yeah. I get that. I think as a, as a listener, mm. I am the same as you. Like yeah. I, when I go to Lover and I don't feel like I'm in the mood to listen to the entire album through. Like I, I do usually start with Cruel Summer. Yeah. Um, just because Cruel Summer, like, Putting a song like Cruel Summer yeah. after I Forgot That You Existed. Like, I Forgot That You Existed is a great song and it's such a bop. And when I'm in the mood to listen to it, I love listening to it. But yeah. I think that we can all agree as Swifties that, like, I Forgot That You Existed is probably on the bottom of people's rankings yeah. on Love Art. And Cruel Summer is at the top. Like, the yeah, polar the opposite pol yeah. nature of those songs. is quite insane. And imagine and if the album opened with Cruel Summer. Like, that would be a lot. I just feel like the produ production-wise and lyrically and, mel and melodically, it's also just falls short for me. Yeah. Like, it's just not a song that... I it's probably, like, one of my least listened to songs on Love Art. Yeah. And that's quite surprising because yeah. normally I... I am someone who loves to listen to the album through. Yeah. Like, that's very important to me. Yeah. So, normally, the first song will be one of my top played. And yeah. I just, I didn't, I don't feel that with I Forgot You Existed. I get that. I respect it. Yeah. I respect it. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Okay. Wow. We got some opinions. All right. So, do you want to go with your okay. number nine yes. first? Yes. My number nine is Tim McGraw. Okay. It is also my number oh, nine. Okay, great, yeah. great, 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 great. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like that's appropriate yes, to say yes, when it's the same number. Same. Yeah, I completely Tim agree. Tim McGraw is yeah. also my number nine. Yeah, I think that 
we probably both feel the same in the sense that I do love this song. Yeah. I think it's a really amazing song. Yeah. Um, and I do think that it set the album up nicely in the sense that she's using this country artist to kind of pull you into the story that she's telling. And I think that that's a really great way to connect with the audience and to make it a very relatable Especially song. as a debuting country yes. artist herself. Totally. She immediately inserts herself in the world. Yes. Of country music. Yeah. By using his name, his name to do which that. Is really cool. Yes. It is really cool that she's done that. But I do still also feel that th- there's nothing about it that particularly sets you up for the album yeah. or what this album is going to be yeah. about, other than maybe just, you know, falling in love in a small yeah. town, which I guess what, yeah. that is what that, the that, album is. That is a theme but on the, the album, But the concept album is not as strong, so yeah. therefore the, the, the first track is not going to be as strong conceptually. I completely agree. Um, I feel exactly the same. I, I think for me the thing that I was thinking about is I think it sits just above mine for me because I do think that the fact that Tim McGraw is the first ever song that Taylor released as a single before even the album came out, mm. I just think that there's, uh, there's something in that for me. I mm. think that it was just a wide decision because I do think that you're right Mm. because there isn't a strong concept really anything could have served as an album opener so using the song that people may already know just makes sense to me yeah and therefore serves as a better album opener in my opinion that makes sense yeah this is so much fun I love not knowing each other's okay you you might hate me for this one. Oh, I think I know what it's going to be. Is it? Don't don't do it to me. Number eight. You don't. It's love and a haze. Oh, that's okay. Okay, oh, okay, 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 okay. Love and a haze is my number eight. Yeah. Now I feel really strongly about this. Mm. Um, once again, when I compare it to the two that have sort of come before it on my list, I, I do think it's better because Midnight's was such a new and interesting sound. And I mean, you guys saw our Midnight's mm. reaction. Like hearing those first opening beats of Love and a Haze was a lot and I do think sonically introduces us to the album quite well Mm -hmm. but I think now upon reflection on what Midnight's as a concept album is Mm -hmm. and I think the message that it holds which really didn't reveal itself Mm -hmm. um, until later on and I think that this is kind of perfect timing for filming this even with getting You're Losing Me on streaming and Jack posting that story on his Instagram about the fact that That You're Losing Me was written in late 2021 um i think that it's just been slowly revealed over the course of this year specifically that a lot of this album is i guess exploring the breakdown of the relationship that taylor was in with joe and we couldn't know that at the time that midnights came out and so now that we have this information i look at lavender haze and i just sort of feel like I think that there's I think that there's a strong message there in terms of like you know the 1950s shit they want from me and just mm-hmm. kind of like calling out the media and stuff on like what they ask of Taylor but the staying up until midnight mm-hmm. at all hours of the night like stewing on what it is that you're going through and trying to and like ruminating and trying to make a decision and like all of these things like Lavender Haze does not as a as a as a lyrical mm. song I think fit into that as well as some of the other songs do oh, I just um, I don't agree yeah but I, I'm I'm like I'm glad you're saying this and yeah I, I understand I think as I well understand. like there's been a little bit of discussion more recently as well of like and I don't even know if I fully believe this myself but there being sort of a narrative by Swifties where they sort of look back on Lavender Hayes and go oh it's like she's almost gaslighting herself in this mm. song like um into believing that maybe she doesn't want to get married and like all of these things or just trying to like convince herself that this mm relationship is serving her more than it actually is Mm. and so in that way I think the song kind of is maybe the least honest Mm -hmm. when it comes to the songs held on midnight it's like there's so much vulnerability Mm. in that album and I think that it is Mm. in comparison lacking as a song Mm, that's interesting so in that way I also don't think it's the best introduction to a very honest yeah. war album yeah okay yeah i i'm gonna ponder on that yeah. and i will i will let you know my thoughts okay. when i when cool. i reveal my ranking of yeah. lavender haze because my number eight is not lavender haze okay yeah <laughs> it is mine 
Ah, uh, yeah, okay, cool. So, yes, yeah. pretty much for similar reasons that you said. I just feel like it didn't necessarily have to be the album opener. I do like that it's setting us up for this kind of storytelling um, vibe that she kind of continues throughout Speak Now. It's obviously yeah. a banger. It's yeah. a fucking, it's her biggest hit off the album. So, I'm not going to complain that we're starting on such a great note. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's a great song. Yes. It's a great oh, song. Mine is a great song. But I just don't think it had to be the album opener. Yeah. I think Sparks Fly maybe would have been a better opener. I don't know, I just, it doesn't feel purposeful. Yeah. And so for that reason, yeah. that's why mine is down there. I mean, I get it. Yeah. I completely agree. Yeah. Number seven. Number seven. This one was hard for me. Yeah. This was hard for me. Yeah. I wasn't sure where I wanted to place this one. The one. <gasps> okay. The one. I do love that she starts this album with, I'm doing good, I'm on some new shit. I think that that was powerful and profound yep. considering the new different sound oh, that we were hearing. It's hard for me to separate my feelings because those the first time I heard those chords was the best moment of my entire yeah. life. <laughs> but as an album opener, I just think it sits somewhere in the middle for me. Okay. Yep. All right. Yep. Fine. Yeah. Yep. The, I I am struggling to spit out my number seven. Yeah, what is it? I'm scared. Because I fucking love this song. Yeah, okay. For me, it's Willow. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. as okay. I said, please don't get That's me what wrong. what I thought. I was love be the next one. Willow so, so, so much. Yeah, I love the one so much. Yeah. Yeah. I think that being the sister album to Folklore, mm. we kind of went into Evermore with an expectation of a certain sound. And look, there is a reason that I am an Evermore stan over a Folklore stan. I do think that there is a lot of differences held in Evermore. And mm. so, and, and I do think that Willow is a little bit different. Mm. Like the fact that like, dun, 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 oh, dun, I love dun, the dun. witchy like, sound. I don't know what's going yeah. on there. And it is actually really quite offensive to be mm. opening an album with sonically a sound mm. like that, but with like a pop melody written yeah. over the top of it. Like it's actually really fucked up that she wrote a song like Willow, yeah, right? it is fucked up. But I just... You don't think it sets it up for the whole album? I don't think it sets it up for yeah. the whole album. And I don't, I think that like with your point with mine, I just think that it didn't need to be the album opener yeah. necessarily. Yeah. Um, I have a lot of opinions about Willow. Yeah. Um, which I'll save. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, that's that's really the main gist of it. Okay, number six. Number six. Number tell six. Me. Oh, it's okay, so my number six is I forgot that you existed. Oh, okay. Yeah. Are you thinking that I forgot you existed is a better album opener than Willow? I do. Yeah. Okay. I do. Okay. Okay. And I guess in contrast to what you said about I forgot that you existed, yeah. I think it's extremely significant. Yeah. That a song like I forgot that you existed mm. follows the reputation. Era. I get that. I get like, that. Like I just think in my mind that was such a fucking power yes. move for her to be. I, I just think that like specifically the story in those three pop albums too, you know, we get an introduction mm. to fighting back at the media and everything mm. and blank space and shake it off in 1989. We get a further exploration of that in reputation mm. because that's when everything obviously really went to shit. Mm. Um, and she was really angry. And I think that moving into Lover and then opening this like happier, lighter album with like, I forgot that you existed and I am really letting my mm. audience know iconic. that I have moved the fuck, fuck on, on with my yeah. life. Like I am no longer in my reputation era. Mm. I'm the same as you in terms of a listener. Like I forgot that you existed mm. is probably one of my least to least listened to songs yeah. on Lover. Like I don't, it's certainly not one of my favorite Taylor Swift songs. That's for sure. But it's I think like, it serves an important purpose yeah. as an album opener. It's like she needed to do, address it and then just kind of move on with like yeah. summer. It feels like the actual start of the yeah. album. But I, I, I get what, I totally get that. And I do agree, which is why it's so hard. But I just think that, it wasn't the moment I wanted it to be on the album. I understand. I think that she tried. Yeah. Maybe that was intentional though. Maybe she wanted it to just be a quick brush off. And yeah. then there's so much she says on yeah. Lover that that's not one of the things that I feel was the moment of Lover. But maybe that was the point. I agree. But and that's the thing. I think that it, you said it just then. Yeah. Like, I think it was like, we need to address what just happened. Yeah. And where I'm at today in yeah. comparison. And then we get you into can, the yes. exploration of what yeah. Lover is. It wouldn't have fit 
it anywhere else on the album. No, I And that's I what I think is significant yes. to me. Like, there is not another song on Lover that yeah. would have served as an album opener. If I forgot that you existed was, like, a random track seven, I'd be like, why? Like, it needs to be that first one. It needs one. to be there or it, doesn't, it can't be on the album. Exactly. You're right. And I think as well that... I respect that. No, yeah. it is a, it's a really hard one. And I, I don't know if I fully agree with myself with putting it last. <laughs> Now that you've said that. Yeah. Okay, my number six is Lavender Haze. Ah, oh, yeah, okay, yeah. I yeah. think that Lavender Haze is quite a good album opener. I love the Meet Me at Midnight. I think that that's a really great introduction to where we're gonna be going in this song. I that's also a good think point. it had what an album opener needed to have in terms of um, shock, like in terms of like introducing us to a new sound. Mm -hmm. I think it's a fucking bop. Like, oh my God, the production is some of my favorite things, sounds I've ever heard. Mm -hmm. What you were kind of saying about the concept and how you don't feel like it really sets us up for the album or that maybe it's the most least honest song. Yeah. I, I feel like this song has changed for me over the months, especially with getting You're Losing Me and The New Date. Yeah. And I do think that Lavender Hayes was, rather than it being not, I do think she's, being not honest with herself. Yeah. But that's what I like about the song. Yeah. Because I think okay. she's being honest in that moment mm -hmm. with where she's at, mm -hmm. which is kind of more of a, I don't want to see the problems. I guess that I is don't... a good point when you consider Midnight's as an album as well, because I do think it's full in, in her trying to figure out what's going on in this relationship and if she needs to move on with her life or yeah. she needs to stay with this person. I think there is a lot of back and yeah. forth. It's like, but you fuck you. And then it's like, oh, but like actually some days things are really yes. good. And like Lavender Haze kind of falls into that yeah. pool of songs. I think for me it falls into this like, I don't want to face what is happening in this relationship. I just want to yeah. stay in the lavender haze. Yeah. Even though there are signs that it's not working. Like to me, there's the, the lyrics in lavender haze can be quite indifferent. Like there's mm. almost like this, you know, you don't really read into my melancholia. That could be a positive lyric, but it also could be, you don't really care about me. Yeah. There's lots of different ways to take the lyrics in the song. It could yeah. be a positive song on surface level, but when you really think about what was happening for her, she could have also been like, I don't want to, see the problems and then the album is exploring the problems mm. but mm. in a non-confrontational way she's actually yeah. going back to her past relationships to fathom those in order to process her current one to try to find out who yeah. is the problem here is it me is it him yeah. so i actually do think it sets us up really nicely for midnights because she wasn't this album is not straightforward. She didn't know how no. to what she didn't know how to make sense of this breakdown of this relationship. Mm. So I do think that Midnight's for that reason is extremely brave, extremely mm. vulnerable, and extremely complex. Um, and then to end on You're Losing Me, even though that came before, is a very interesting loop in my opinion. No, I, they were really struggling for quite a while. Yeah. And so the desperation to stay in the lavender yeah. haze, it kind of is what Midnight's is. Yeah. It's like holding on to those last shreds and like trying yes. to figure out like, Making is there excuses. any way I can make this work? Yeah. Yeah, I, I get that. And trying to remember the positive times, you know, trying to remember when they first fell in love, how to get back to that. Yeah. And also, you know, kind of gaslighting herself in a way to not think too much about the future, yeah. like brides, kid, all those yeah. kind of things, because that was scary. That was so uncertain for them at the time. Now we have the lyric like, yeah, I would like marry those are the either. sorts of things that you're not going to be thinking about as heavily yeah. when you don't even know if your relationship's totally. going to survive. Yeah. It. And I do think that's quite a relatable mm. thing. When people don't want to face something, mm. they can kind of twist their own way of of, yeah. of making it okay yeah. and I think yeah. that's what yeah. she was kind of doing in Love and yeah. Haze so I do think it sets that's us up point. for a very very interesting introduction to the album yeah 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 um, and I was just deeply concerned when I heard it for yeah. the first time. It, it, it was deeply fucking concerning to hear for the <laughs> so first time good. what the fuck is Love and oh Haze oh my god so concerning okay we're at number five number five okay my number five is Willow okay cool yeah I really toyed with where to put this one because yeah. um I do feel like both Folklore and Evermore, the album openers are not the things that I go, wow, about this album, these albums. And I was trying to toy whether or not I preferred the one over Willow. Mm -hmm. I prefer Willow as a song yeah. over the one, but I also was thinking about how I really love how Willow feels like to me, almost like the little sister to Mastermind. 
Because I do feel like in a way she's kind of setting up like this every album. Every band switch was a work of yeah, art. Yeah, and like uh, Life Was a Willow and it bent right to your wind. Like she's yeah. kind of, Willow was like she's trying to make it like, you know, her and Joe just like mesh together and it was yeah. this kind of like thing. But then there's this witchy almost spell casting energy that she introduced you straight into with this album and I think that's really special the sound of Willow yeah is more special to me than the sound of the one like I feel like it I do agree with that takes you into the evermore world I do agree with that like what is ha- like you said before yeah like, what is that sound I what have is no idea there? Willow is no, you're so right. in enchanting almost and there's something even in her saying like they count me out time and time again yeah. but I come back stronger than a 90s trend that's a bit mastermind Absolutely. as well it's like even when people don't believe in me yes I know yes. I'm going to come back because totally. I am a mastermind. Exactly. I will make you love me again even yes. when you count me out. And I love that that's the beginning of Evermore. And then on the yeah. next album, we have Mastermind as the album yeah. closer. Yeah. And I feel like there's a really cool connection there. And almost like she's introducing that concept in Evermore to tell you how she's going to take you on this journey and take you to another world. And it feels more, in, it feels more intentional in a way, I don't know, Willow's a very interesting song. A yeah. very no, it is. interesting it is. It is. song. Mm. It's The one is so much more simple in my mind. It is. Willow yeah. has layers yeah. that yeah. I don't yeah. even think we've all fully fathomed what's happening. Yeah. My number five is the one. Okay, okay. Yeah. So we like pretty much swapped them. Yeah, 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 we okay. did. Okay. Um, and yes, oh, like, so I, I do curious agree. about our, <laughs> our further rankings after this. They might be the same. They might honestly. be, yeah. I agree with some of the things that you've said about Willow and the one I do. Yeah. Um, for me, the one is a more significant album opener mm. for a few reasons. Yeah. Okay. First of all, it is the very first introduction that we have into mm. the folklore Evermore era. Yeah. So straight off the bat, I feel like the one is more important as an opener than the will mm. uh, than than the Willow than Willow. Yeah. Um, as I kind of said with my Willow ranking, I just think that it, there is something about Evermore being a continuation and yeah. a sister album that there was something about sitting down listening to Evermore for the first time that we were half expecting a similar energy, mm. whereas folklore was completely new and different mm. so I think introducing uh, like that it just automatically yeah. in my mind is more important yeah I get that um oh, I think so, I love this conversation yeah. it's so fun to fathom like the different reasons Why and, stuff. and I, I, I agree yeah. so valid yeah so yeah. valid the one was so iconic when you first heard that oh my god secondly it's called the one yeah the one number one it's Track like one it's like her making seven track ten. You're right. Like she, uh, what? What do you? What do you want oh, as an album opener? That, like it's one. That's so true. It is one. It yeah. has to be one. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, I do. I do. Yeah. I do. I like that. I like that. Thirdly, I think that this song <laughs> opening with the piano mm. is so important <laughs> because the album <laughs> is so piano heavy. <laughs> so sonically, I think it introduces us very well to what we are about to hear in the album. Wow. Evermore, yeah. Folklore is so piano. I'm just like going through the track and yeah. the tracks and I'm like, almost every song has a is piano. A piano. In it. The only one I can think of that maybe doesn't is like Mirable. Mirable is very oh, guitar heavy. What's um Mighty's Ricochet? <sighs> maybe the Jack songs aren't piano. But then, like, when you compare it to, to Evermore, you're right, because, like... Well, Evermore's a little more upbeat, so it's easier for there to be a missing piano in some of those no, songs. No, but you're right, there's a lot more guitar in Evermore. Maybe that's why we're such yeah. Evermore fans. Maybe like, there's we a lot of electric guitar electric in Evermore. Guitars. Like, even, yeah. like, Tis the Damn Season. Yeah. Dorothea's all guitar. Yeah. Um, Willow is guitar. Yeah. 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 Mm, I like that. So there's that. Exactly what you said before. I'm doing good, I'm on some new shit. Yeah. Like, I am so sorry. So iconic. But that would have been offensive for her to put that lyric any other place in you're the right. album. No, like, right. her opening with that yeah. line, I think that... I feel like every folklore... time you speak, I'm like, that's right, yes. Well, no, I shouldn't have, yeah. Those are my reasons. Valid. I yeah, completely those understand. are my reasons. We're up to number four. Number four. And I think we... I believe we have the same four songs. Like, we haven't... We have the same four songs in our top four. So, I wonder how we've ordered them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ah! Okay, my number four yes. is yes. Welcome to New York. Oh. Yeah. 
Mine's yeah. not. Okay. Mine was, and yeah. I changed it last week. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh so for me, welcome to New York. I just think, like, welcome. Yes. First of all, just welcome. You welcome know, like to the welcome album. to this new era, yeah. to this rebirth album, to yeah. this new sound. It's a new soundtrack. I could dance to this beat forever more. Yes. Like I'm so sorry. <laughs> that could not have been anywhere else on no, the album. I agree. I think the whole New York energy of the album. Um, it was so important to introduce the scene. Yes. Before we get into the story, <laughs> right? Like Welcome to New York couldn't have been like a track six. I'm so sorry, but we needed the scene set before so we can funny. find out what's happening yeah. in that scene. Yeah. New York. I'm New so York. sorry. Just it's important. It's, it's important. so important. It I had it is important. at my number 4 and then I simply had to I simply had to move it up for all those reasons. Yeah. My number 4 is Fearless. Yep. Yep. Um, I feel like th these are going to be our two that we switched around. Maybe not. Okay, we'll see. Um, Fearless, I think that Fearless is not only one of her best songs. I just love Fearless. I think it's an iconic song. But I think that it was an amazing album opener and title track because it really just sets us up for what this album is. Yeah. The concept is much stronger than, say, debut. Mm -hmm. I think it's really concerning that she was daydreaming about this love and that she already knew at this age that the feeling she wanted to feel was fearless. I just think that's so iconic. I don't know why it How gets me every time. How an 18-year-old can identify yeah. that being the feeling that she wants in a relationship? Like, so many, so many it's people not obvious. in general, let alone a teenager, are not aware of what it is that they're actually no. wanting from a relationship. Fearless is Her a knowing very, that is a lot. Yeah, and it's a very specific feeling, actually. Yeah. Yeah. To have no fear and to feel safe yeah. and to feel almost like you could do anything with that person. Yeah. I think that that is such an underrated feeling and she just nailed it on the head in that song. But also kind of set the theme for that album, what she was yeah. going to do with that yeah. album, what yeah. that album signified for her. It was just... It was fearless. Yeah. And she's always been that, you know? Yeah. She, she's fearless on stage. She's fearless with her songwriting, with her vulnerability. I... I just think it captures her perfectly. Yeah. It's a fucking good song. Yeah. Yeah. Fearless. Yeah. Yep. Like, if you don't get it, you don't get it. I'm yeah, sorry. No, I don't I, know what I, to say. Yeah. It's a yeah. fucking superior yes. song. <laughs> yes. So wait, I'm, now I'm guessing that your yeah. number three is Welcome to it New York. Is, yeah. <laughs> and my number three is Fearless. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. <laughs> so I did have it that way. Yeah. I did have it that way yep. originally. And then I was listening to Welcome to New York and I just said, Walking through a crowd, the village is aglow. <laughs> Kaleidoscope of loud heartbeats under coats. Everybody here wanted something more. <laughs> Searching for a sound we hadn't heard before. That is just the most concerning album opener I've ever heard. Uh, well, not really, no, it there's is. two others. It is. But it is. I just feel like Welcome to New York is... It's just an iconic song. And like yeah. everything you said before, like it, we're setting the scene. We're in New York. This album is set in New York. The feeling that it creates for this album is unmatched. Yeah. I, I completely agree. It's Welcome agree. to New York. I completely agree. It's Welcome to New York. <laughs> the lights still um, fly, but they never blind me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I feel exactly the same as you do about Fearless. Mm. Um, I think to add on to what you said, I think another thing for me is the fact that like it's the only title track that is an album Same. opener I as well. That too. And I think that that flows well into your point of it being that like, you know, Fearless as a song was obviously describing that she wants to feel fearless in a relationship. But the fact that that's also the concept for the entire album in terms of like speaking her mind or like you know, jumping both feet into mm. any experience, relationship, this new career of hers. Yeah. Um, I think it even ties in well with the album Closer Change. Yeah. You know, like it's like Change is like a song where it's like she always knew that they were going to get where they wanted to go. And by they, I mean like her and yeah. Scott Bruschetta and like her band. And like totally. they were, they knew that they were going to, she knew that they were going to reach the success that they wanted to. Mm. And that requires fearlessness, you Absolutely. know, like it's just fearless as a concept for the entire album is so important. And so opening the album with that song 
I'm so sorry, it couldn't have gone anywhere else. But I also think that to my earlier point when talking about Welcome to New York, Fearless is as an album extremely sonically cohesive and I think the the sounds that we hear in Fearless perfectly set us up for this sound that we explore in, in the rest of the album, which I do think is quite different from debut. Yeah. It's still very country, but you can tell a Fearless song from a debut song. Like there's a glitter yes. to Fearless. Completely that, agree. Uh, uh, is also held in the song feeler. So I think it just perfectly introduces us into that. Yeah. I also think that there are themes lyrically in feelers that tie in well with other lyrics on the album, which I do think kind of like allow for this theme, this like fairy tale imagery or like the, the dancing in the rain and the dresses and mm -hmm. the princess and like all of that kind of thing. Like that, is so regularly explored in different mm. songs on Fearless and she brings it up in mm. Fearless. Like, with you I dance in a storm in my best dress, Fearless. And then we get songs like Coming with the Rain yeah, and like all of that. It's just, you up. Yeah. it's just perfect. I agree. It's just perfect. Um, so, okay, so we do have the, f the same top two. We do have the same top two. I wonder what the- I know, are. I'm my number two. Yeah. Is ready for oh. it. I respect. I respect. We just need to like say this now. Say so obviously way. your number two is State, State of, Grace. of Grace. My number one is State of Grace. Yeah. And your number one is, is ready, ready for, for it. it. Yeah. 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 And either way, it's respectable. Either way, it's respectable. Ready for it. Oh my <laughs> God. Like, like on face value, you can look at it and go objectively, it's the best opening yes. song. Like I understand why you put it number one. Yeah. Are you ready for it? Yes. Like introducing the reputation era such a different feel such yeah. a different sound such a different message mm. such a different attitude yeah. from taylor for the we've never heard anything like reputation before no are you ready for it like i don't know if i am thank I'm you not. for asking no, the question no i'm not i'm not thank you for asking the question like it was an important question to be asking to an audience member listening to reputation for the first time like and i'm so comeback. sorry what the she's fuck? like I literally are you ready for my comeback yeah and I think yeah. that, like, I don't think objectively Ready For It is the best song she's ever written out of this category. No. But I do think it's the best, I do think it's the best yeah. album opener. And I think it's grown to become the most iconic. You yeah. Know, you cannot argue that when she steps out on that stage during Reputation set, the whole stadium is at her feet. And she fucking knows that that's the most Absolutely. iconic song and the most iconic intro she's ever done. Absolutely. I mean, I agree. I agree. I do agree. It's so fucking iconic. The reason I put State of Grace first, though, yeah. it's almost inexplicable. Like, yeah. I, it's just, okay. Objectively, State of Grace is actually one of the best songs she's ever written. I agree. Ever. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that that's not what we're discussing here today, but I do think it just needs to be said. Mm -hmm. yeah. I also just think that something that we've really been fathoming recently is how Red as an album is the Taylor Swift album. Mm -hmm. Like, for both of us, when we discuss like our top three Taylor Swift albums, like Red isn't even in either of our top three favorite albums. But if somebody who doesn't know Taylor Swift that well came to me and said, if I have to listen to one Taylor Swift album, what would you recommend I listen to? It has to be Red. I'm so sorry. It is quintessentially Taylor fucking Swift. And that being the heartbreak album, but opening it with a song like State of Grace, there's this like hopefulness and this like, no, State of Grace just has this fucking energy State about of Grace, it. It 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 does actually set up the entire album perfectly. No, it just does. The most perfectly. Out it of actually every just does. Single opening. It first of all that guitar, the way that it starts, sorry, the drums and then the guitar coming in is electric. Uh, it's electrifying. No. I've never heard a better song in my entire never. life. Never. No, I'm so sorry. State of Grace is too much. And like you could argue and you might argue that ready for it it has a similar thing because you start with like a, I know I'm going to be with you, so I'll take my time. Yeah. And then we end with like, call it what you want. And like, I want you forever in New Year's Day. Like yeah. we actually kind of see the progression of the relationship starting and then like solidifying. So iconic. Oh but my State God. of Grace serves the exact same purpose. Mm. It's like, it's like her. An overview. Knowing. It's an overview. Mm. It's an overview. Do you know what? Mm. I think that that's the difference. Yeah. Ready for it is a beginning. Yes. But State of Grace is an overview of the entire thing. State of Grace is like she's looking above the entire album. Yeah. And she writes this fucked up yeah. song about she's the like, journey she's like, I know what this relationship on. 
was yeah. and is. Yeah. And I can write about all of it just in this one song. Like I am telling you everything that I'm expecting to happen yeah. in this relationship and everything that has happened in this relationship in the opening song. I'm so sorry. What the fuck? I have something to read about State of Grace, which I oh, feel please. like just perfectly encaptures why it is so fucking superior. Uh-huh. According to Christian theology, the State of Grace is one where you are under divine influence. Taylor feels that this relationship is in a league of its own and she and her partner are in a world of their own. Their love is almost spiritual and divine. According to this, the concept of grace is developed alongside the concept of sin. Taylor feels that this love was very conflicting, both wonderful and awful. No. The theme continues throughout the whole album. So I really love so that whole... Um, under the, the divine influence I, yep. I feel like I've never I'd never really fully grasped that until like the last year like that that's what she's saying under state of grace like this could go one way or the other and she's yep. exploring why it might go all these different ways because yep. of the way that they've loved in the past because of yep. their relationship trauma or history I just think it's such a objective song it's almost bigger than anything it's yeah it's there's some sort of wisdom in this song yeah that she's captured that is just incredible (sighs) it's it's interesting that you even say that um after what you just read to us as well because i think that like there's something it's wisdom there's something so wise (laughs) about state of grace yeah that it's almost like it's impossible for a woman that young Mm. to have had that without divine intervention. Absolutely. Like, it's like the song came to her spiritually as well. And that's, like, felt in the whole song. Yeah. Something else that um, you were reading as well in in that about it kind of this this theme Mm. following through the whole album. Mm. Once again, I think that this is why ultimately for me it turned out as number one because I think that every single song in red can be brought back to state of grace yeah. whereas ready for it l- lyrically is so heavily emphasized actually on the relationship yeah. that i think that in some ways it fails to touch on the reputation mm-hmm. downfall element of reputation yeah i get that and that is the reason that state of grace is number one for me yeah I get but that. i would love to hear if you've got well, some further inside. I think that Ready For It just came out on top because I am a rep stand at heart. Yeah. I think that it's turned <laughs> into something too iconic in terms of like the, the tour and the Eras tour and just everything that it's done for her since that album came out. Such a badass it's song. such a badass song. Like, the, I like know I'm going like to be with con- you. Like, she's just oozing confidence. Oozing, yes. Yeah. And that's what you need yeah. to write a song, uh, sorry, to write an album, yeah. like, reputation. Exactly. And and to get that yeah. message across as and a strong woman. You can't be unsure about yeah, that attitude. No. I think her saying, like, I know I'm going to be with you, um, so I take my time. Are you ready for it? It's just, like, like you said, that all of that confidence. But I do think it sets us up for the rest of the album because I think, in a way, she's saying, are you ready for me to fucking say what I've got to say? Uh, totally, like, I agree. Are you ready for this relationship? But also, are you ready for me to do the most crazy shit I've ever done yeah. and have the biggest comeback I've ever had yeah. Yeah. and yeah. enter my bad fucking ass bitch <laughs> Oh my god! No, I, I, I do agree. I do agree. As a message isolated, like, yeah. are you ready for it? Yeah. It's just perfect. For me, it was a battle of the most superior songwriting she's ever done and the most iconic thing she's ever done. That The two of them sit on top for me for their own different reasons. Yeah. Reputation is just that fucking bitch i don't know what you want me to say she's so iconic yeah i don't know how to cope yeah. with her red I get it. is the best songwriting she's ever done state of grace is honestly might be my number one on on red it's just it's, yeah. it's absolutely superior yeah yeah how does how does one compare to perfection it's very 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 difficult yeah to choose that's, i totally that's get it my, that's my that's my i love process. it oh my we were so close. This, this is such a fascinating thing to do. <laughs> Guys, I would absolutely love you all to comment below yeah. like what your ordering of it is and if you've got and any why. specific reasons as to why you mm-hmm. feel like you're number one and two or like your bottom ones 
are where they are. Yeah. Please tell us, especially if they're different to ours, because I'm so intrigued as to all the different reasons yeah. why people feel like yeah. these songs serve a different purpose for the album I and like all of that. Also, these two, you know, Ready For It and State of Grace, um, when I go, oh, I'm going to listen to Red or oh, I'm going to listen to Reputation, I'm like, oh, I, when I realize what the first track you is, wanna start with I get number so one. excited. I'm like, oh, I'm ready for yeah. it. You know, yeah. boom, boom, boom. Yeah. What the fuck is that? No. Absolutely most illegal no. thing. And then when I'm ready for State of Grace, I'm like, oh, those drums come in no. and they hit me. And I'm just like, give me the album. The drums give are a me the album. Experience. A spiritual experience. They are, absolutely. I don't feel that way about some of the. And welcome to no, New York I as agree. well. You know, that's yeah. how I feel. Welcome to. I'm like, fucking get me to New I, York. I feel that way bitch. about Fearless too. Like, my top oh, same. four. Like, I specifically yes. want to start the album same. with those songs. I know like, they're going to really get me into it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that that is something too, like there's just a feeling behind it, yeah, right? Like is. if you have yeah. an inclination to be skipping track one, yeah. then it's not doing enough. It's not doing the most. No. The top four for both of us that we chose, all four of those, I'm like, if I'm listening to this album all the way through, I have to start with number Same. one. There is no other option yeah. because it's too important for me to listen to this song well, yeah, going into the rest of the album. I, I don't get set up properly. Yeah. I, I, I skip the setup and the setup is very important yeah. for how I'm going to experience the yeah. album. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Ah, that was so much fun. That was so much fun. I love that we were like this pretty much. Yeah. Like, I feel like if we had decided this together, it would have been really easy and yeah. we probably would have battled each other out of it. That's true. To re- no, re- it's to actually to more a- fun to sometimes have rankings that require a smaller pool of songs so we yes. can do two separate ones. I agree. Yeah. Because it's just interesting to hear how people have different opinions. Whereas yeah. like, if we're doing a video where we just have all the same opinions, like we want to change that vibe up sometimes. Yeah, exactly. And I do think it's personal as well. Like however it's a, an album opener or an album closer impacts you, there is going to be a personal level to yeah. that. Um, yeah. And yeah, I would love to know your guys' yeah. and how you feel like, how you feel like this ranking sits with you. Yes. Um, is, is there anything that you're extremely offended by? <laughs> uh, or if you feel like we need to fathom something, please yeah. let us know. So please that we let can, us know. So that we can have a, an experience. Absolutely. Yeah. Guys, we are absolutely in the next few weeks going to be doing another one of these rankings for closes as well. So stay tuned so for excited. that. Um, but we will see you soon for another video. Love you guys so much. Love you. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.